Thank you for sharing your time with us today. My name is Taryn Folks, and today we are highlighting what's new in drone reality capture for mining. We have a few notes that we want to start off with. I want to share we are recording this session and we will email you a link so that you can revisit the presentation at any time. And for those of you who maybe are unfamiliar with GoToWebinar, we have a graphic here that will help you navig navigate and identify some key features. For example, asking us questions. And then today, everyone's going to remain on mute. So if you do have any questions, you can type them in that question box. And we were also going to leave 10 minutes at the end for a question and answer. And then also we encourage you to participate in a few polling questions that we will share out throughout the webinar as a way to better help you guys in the future and our users. And now I'd like to announce today's presenters. So for today's webinar, I am joined by a number of imagery and natural resource leaders. Chris Scheel here is a senior account executive on our imagery and remote sensing team. Matt Ballard is a solutions engineer on our Esri natural resource team. And Nico Bonifu is a site scan for ArcGIS product manager, and he will be here to help answer questions during our question and answer. And the purpose of today's webinar is to showcase some valuable applications of drone and mining, use cases, and how to make the most of your imagery data for the ArcGIS system for easy collaboration and reporting. And we're going to start off this webinar with our first polling question. We'd like to ask, what software are you currently using in your drone data program? Are you using SiteScan for ArcGIS, ArcGIS drone to map, or do you have an other desktop solution or other cloud solution? Or are you not currently using a drone software package? Okay. And now we're going to queue the results. So we see a few of you are already adopting SiteScan for ArcGIS. There's others with drone to map. And then we have a good amount of you know, other solutions being used. And then even more so, some that don't currently have a drone software package. So thank you for answering that. And we're very excited for you to hear what we have for the rest of today. Now I'm going to pass it over to Chris Scheel. Thank you, Taryn. As, as Taryn mentioned, welcome and thank you for joining us today. Um, drones have come into the scene in remote sensing with an amazing accuracy. Um, there's high resolution sensors, increased capabilities, uh, compatibility, and this has not been overlooked by the mining industry. So, you know, repeatability really provides an opportunity for high temporal cadence, allowing the user to monitor a constantly changing landscape. Um, this also involves situational awareness, uh, increasing that awareness, whether during exploration, construction, pre or post blast analysis, or even reclamation activities. Um, drones are used to collect data used as inputs for tailings facility management, building digital twins, as well as looking at stockpile management, which we'll look at throughout the presentation. Um, but we provide you know, the capability to measure ground features, detect changes in elevation. And of course, there's that always the health and safety benefit of collecting remotely sensed data versus your traditional survey methods. Esri understands the need to capture, process, analyze, and quickly get to the decisions within your mining operations. Our answer to this is SiteScan for ArcGIS. End-to-end -end cloud based platform that SiteScan for ArcGIS is, um, is designed to help our customers plan autonomous flights, process the flights into 2D and 3D products, manage your data, as well as provide the tools necessary to export, share, published to ArcGIS Online or ArcGIS Enterprise, depending on the environment that you want to interact with your data. We also have automated fleet management, which we'll touch on a little bit later on in this presentation. Within SiteScan, we have SiteScan Flight, which is the flight application part of the solution. The repeatable flight plans for uniform data collection and autonomous data capture um, help provide the the autonomous workflow that users are are looking for we have numerous flight 
modes such as area scans to create high resolution orthos and a focus on you know, nadir imagery. Or you can collect a crosshatch survey, which collects the project area from multiple angles, increases that view angle, overlap and side lap, and allows you to produce high quality 3D products. We even introduced vertical scans, which we will show later on in this presentation when I pass it on to Matt. Uh, but this allows you to capture open pit sites where you require surface level detail of benches or high walls for inspection purposes. You can leverage Esri's world elevation data set and apply terrain follow. This will allow the drone to keep a consistent flight altitude over the underlying ground elevations and really provide that scenario for, for a uniform data capture. Pre-flight checklists can be customized and leveraged throughout your fleet to ensure safety and repeatable conditions. We also have post-flight checklists coming in Q1 of 2022. In early 2022, we will also have support for the Free Fly Astro and DJI M300 RTK with the P1 sensor within SightScan flight itself. So you can build autonomous flight missions with those platforms as well. SightScan Manager is our web interface that provides quick visualization analysis for our captured drone data. So you move from SightScan flight, planning those autonomous missions, bringing that data into SightScan Manager so that you can quickly visualize and analyze your drone data. Um, you can visualize 3D meshes in Esri Scene Viewer, as well as view logged flights within fleet management. We'll have a demonstration of fleet management a little bit further on, um, but we've, we've enhanced these workflows within SightScan Manager for ease of use. We have profile tools that will allow you to view 3D meshes and then analyze that data further making measurements. We also have airspace approval and, and have made that easier. So for our US customers, we, we work with a partner airspace link and we can gain air, airspace approval right directly um, through this interface. For those customers that we have flying missions outside of the US, we, can, we also have the ability to unlock those DJI no fly zones um, to improve that, that planning workflow as well. Document control for items such as certifications or manuals or even insurance documentation can be done within fleet, site scan fleet management. You can manage your aircraft and batteries, um, viewing the longevity of these batteries or looking at the number of missions that you've, that you've flown over a, a period of time, monthly, yearly, um, as well as pilot activity uh, and in an interactive dashboard. For those flights that were not planned or captured within site scan flight, we do provide the ability to log flights and include this data into your fleet management database so that you're really building that comprehensive look at all of the missions that you're capturing. Within SightScan, we also have analysis capabilities, which we will show some of this further on uh, as far as volumetrics and stockpile management, but we provide the ability to apply ground control. Uh, many of our users want the, the increased geolocation accuracy of the data sets that they're capturing. They're laying ground control panels, um, collecting survey of those points, and you can leverage those within SightScan Manager. We also have some uh, ML capabilities that are, that are automatically detecting these ground control panels um, to just help in easing the workflow of applying ground control to your data sets. You can monitor change and compare to past missions. Um, so if, you're, if you have a site that you're flying over and over, you want to be able to monitor that change in volumetrics. Um, as far as your stockpile management workflows go, you can do that. You can also generate reports and export those into various formats to continue to build that system of record. And lastly, I also want to touch on the fact that we've built a lot of capabilities in and around dissemination and collaboration into the ArcGIS system. So from a data management standpoint, you can push image data out. You can build mosaic data sets and manage temporal data. You can further analyze the data, again, looking at temporal analysis, change detection, um, looking at imagery data sets, or even looking at the change in 3D elevations. You can do this within Pro by downloading the data, or you can push data directly to ArcGIS Online or ArcGIS Enterprise. Furthermore, Leveraging our spectral capabilities within Pro or ArcGIS Online, 
you can do spectral analysis on multispectral data. And then lastly, you can push this data to, to applications that your organization is customizing and building within, uh, within your workforce. So you can refresh um, appended new layers as a tiled imagery layer. You can view data within scene um, viewers or experience builder applications, or even push data to dashboards or Power BI um, and further get, get data into the hands of, of users that are in a mobile environment. Great. We have another polling question we'd like to ask before we move on. We'd like to know what phase of the mining lifecycle are you currently using drones? Is it in exploration, maybe site design and planning? Is it development and construction or production and operations? Or are you also using it in closure and reclamation? Let's cue the results now. It's very interesting. We have a lot of you using exploration and site design and planning, nice little tie. And then we have development and construction, and most of you are using it in production and operations. And a few enclosure reclamation. So I think product had one, there we go. And so now I'm gonna pass it off for my, Matt and Chris to show a demonstration of SciScan for ArcGIS and how those drones can be applied in those life cycles. All right, thanks, Taryn. Mm -hmm. Uh, so just to reintroduce myself, uh, my name is Matt Ballard. I'm a solution engineer at Esri on the natural resources team. And I'm going to walk through a demonstration of, uh, of SiteScan for ArcGIS. And we're going to look at really three key areas. And one is the SiteScan manager application, which you can see on my screen at the moment. And we'll look at the SiteScan flight application, which is on a tablet and which is what we use to plan and conduct flights out in the field. And then lastly, we'll look at how all of this data and analytics captured from drones can be brought into the rest of ArcGIS and how it can be leveraged in things like mobile applications or uh, raster analytics tools. But like I said, we're going to start off by looking at the SiteScan Manager application. Here in my browser, what I have is access to all of the different missions that we've flown over um, in our organization here. And they're all shown on a map here and I can quickly access each of them from a list. And I wanna show you what SiteScan for ArcGIS creates before we actually look at how you capture this data out in the field. This is a flight that was, or a, a mission that was flown, in this case captured 375 photos, which we can see where they uh, were taken if I turn on that layer here on the left. We can see all the different photos that were captured in their full native resolution if we wanted to. What SiteScan for ArcGIS does is it takes all of these pictures and uses cloud-based processing to turn them into a variety of map-ready, analytics-ready information products. That includes, of course, this ortho mosaic, which I can see in my, uh, in my map here, our base map. Uh, it also includes uh, products like a VARI map that shows locations of uh, vegetation or high uh, green color in this case. It also creates elevation models that you can use to look at things like contours, um, perform cut fill analysis, help look at hill shades and more. And we also create point clouds and textured meshes. So I'm gonna jump over to another project and show you uh, are textured meshes. So these textured mesh are 3D uh, photorealistic representations of, um, of what you captured, of what you flew. And we started the, in this past year utilizing a new engine to create these, which are creating very hyper-realistic representations of, uh, of your assets. And this is an example of one of those meshes that was uh, captured and processed. Uh, for mine here. And these are great for inspection type of workflows or for creating digital twins of mines and, um, and for truly getting a, a real recent perspective on, on what your mine looks like. In addition, we can capture missions in, uh, over areas multiple times and look at how that uh, specific region has potentially changed over the past certain time frame. So at the top, I've selected a couple of 
flights that we flew over this recent construction uh, project. And I can swipe and compare how these two areas have changed, right? And clearly see uh, areas that maybe have been devegetated for uh, you know, reclamation purposes or for just understanding what impact we've had on the environment. And we can also use these flights to perform some analysis. So I mentioned earlier the ability to perform cut fill analysis. Uh, I can use cut fill to compare those two flights to see uh, those two missions to see where the surface has changed. Uh, so I'll go ahead and load in a previous flight and it'll perform the analysis and show me all the places where that surface has changed. And we can also grid this to show us in, um, the specific volume of material which has either been added or removed within a specific area. So I'll turn on this grid and have it show me the volume and give that a few seconds to process. Uh, so in these orange areas for these missions, we can see where the material uh, increased, where there was a, a fill, and green where there was a cut. We'll give that a second to, to load those volume estimates. In addition, the same cut and fill analytics can be used for things like stockpiles. I've moved over to a new mission where I've opened up our measuring tools. At this, uh, at this spot, we've delineated the location for all of the stockpiles, which you can see here, shown in blue. In each of these stockpiles, the volume has been calculated for them, which you can see on the left over here, uh, shown as this cut and fill. And we can view those volumes in 3D uh, as well, which you saw in the slides earlier from Chris. So blue represents the surface that was captured from this mission, and the gold surface on the bottom represents a flat plane that's been uh, interpolated from the base of these uh, of the surface that was captured from the drone. And again, at the bottom left, you see those cut fill measurements. The final analytic that will show how you can use this data that's been captured in SiteScan for ArcGIS is um, is our haul road analytics tools. Within mining, it's very important for us to ensure that haul roads uh, have the proper slopes, that berms are um, of the appropriate height, and a variety of other attributes which we can analyze from those digital surface models that are created. So within SiteScan for ArcGIS, what I can use is this haul road analysis tool on the right to digitize the center line of these roads and then perform an analysis to tell me those berm heights, those road widths, the slopes, and more. Uh, I'll go ahead and turn on this analysis that's been uh, processed previously and show you what that looks like. So in this case, we're looking at the road slope and we've set thresholds for maximum values, uh, warning values, and, um, and compliant values, which are shown in green, red, and yellow. Areas of, of high slope, if I click on these, are shown uh, within this uh, application as red, and, and those are issues that maybe need to be regraded or inspected. And likewise, we're getting uh, that same type of a visualization for our cross fall, our berm height, and our road width. So this is the site scan manager application and, and really this is where all of the processing and the analytics and the visualization occur and it's where you manage uh, all of your drone operations before you get to this stage though you need to fly a drone and so at this point i'm going to share my tablet screen and we can look at the site scan flight application So the SightScan flight application is a, a mobile app for iOS tablets, which allows you to conduct a variety of different flights uh, using these different flight modes that you see here, like area surveys for large areas or cross-hatch surveys to get uh, areas with elevation changes. We've got perimeter scans, vertical scans, which we'll look at in a moment, and, and a variety of other ones. 
I'm going to go ahead and zoom into this area where uh, we have some operations. And to help us plan a drone flight, we want to use some of our authoritative GIS data coming from our ArcGIS organization to plan this. And so I'm going to go find some, some maps and some data that somebody else has made available to me and add this to our application. So this is a, just an, uh, a general site map for our operations here. And, um, and using this data, I can uh, inform where I'm planning this flight. I happen to know down here in this uh, purple delineated area is a, a new area that we're exploring and there's some construction projects. And I've been tasked to fly a drone over this area to, to get a better surface model for, for planning and construction purposes. So what I'll do is just draw a bounding box around our area of interest. And at the bottom of the map, site scan flight is indicating to me how much time it will take, what the resolution of the resulting data will be, acreage, number of images and batteries. And as I change the flight height or other attributes like the gimbal and hatch angle, we'll get updates to that. And the other thing that's new to site scan flight is the ability to enable terrain following. So I've jumped into their 3D visualization and turned on terrain follow. And what this does is it uses Esri's global elevation model to um, help the drone maintain a constant elevation above the surface, which is really useful for working in areas where there's significant topography. So one, you know, you're keeping the drone from crashing into anything, and then you know, two, you're able to, by maintaining that constant elevation, get a better end result. When I'm ready to go uh, and fly this, I conduct my pre-flight checklist to confirm that all the certifications are in place, the batteries are uh, charged, the weather is good for flying drones, and all these other attributes. And these checklists can be customized for your specific uh, governance. The next thing that we're going to look at is um, is the vertical uh, vertical scan flight mode. With this mode, uh, this is something that's very useful for the mining industry, where you're inspecting things that are uh, vertical faces, right? Vertical mine faces, uh, like this one that we're looking at here, where there's really significant uh, vertical elevation. Coming into the application, I have a previous ortho mosaic from a from a flight that was conducted before, and I'm going to use that to draw the base of this uh, of this face here, and delineate where that is. And then I can specify information like the slope of this area, the bottom elevation that we want to start flying at, and the top elevation that we want to fly at. Um, but then what I'll do is actually bring in another data layer from our ArcGIS organization. That's a, um, the uh, textured mesh from a previous flight. We can use this to again inform how we plan our flight uh, and use it to change attributes like I mentioned earlier around the slope, the bottom and top elevations and more. And as I change these parameters, my flight updates instantly in the map and we can use this to, to iteratively uh, improve what our flight plan looks like. Once I'm satisfied with, uh, with what that flight mode looks like, I think it's gonna cover the area of interest sufficiently. I can go ahead and go through that checklist again and conduct the flight. All right, so that summarizes the site scan flight app. And the last thing that we'll look at with regards to site scan for our GIS is around fleet management. Uh, after you've flown your drone and you've uploaded it into this environment and you've processed everything, you're ready to go and you have all those uh, analytics and tools that we looked at. Uh, but the additional feature around this fleet management that I mentioned is um, something that new that we've added this year, which helps you manage drone operations for a larger organization where you maybe have multiple pilots, multiple drones, multiple aircraft, uh, batteries, and um, and more. Within this application, you can see all of your information regarding those different um, uh, items, like the pilot's aircraft batteries and flights. 
here at the dashboard, I get a very high level overview of the number of flights that have occurred per month, uh, where within the world those flights have occurred, and some recent activity, uh, who flew what and how long they flew it for. As I jump through these different tabs on the left, I can start to get more information like about activity, uh, the total number of flights or flight hours per week or per month over the past couple of years in that recent activity, showing, showing me you know, who flew what. I can look at all of our pilots in our organization and use this to manage their certification expirations uh, shown here, and in red indicating those employees who uh, certifications may have already expired. And I can also, as I mentioned, manage the actual hardware, the aircraft, all the information associated with them, um, uh, information like any kind of documents that we capture, um, such as receipts, insurance, user manuals, registration, and more. And batteries on the hardware side, uh, similar information that you'd capture and in including the capacity of those batteries over time as those diminish uh, through uh, charging cycles, you can see how that's visualized within here. Also new to this, this application uh, is the ability to add flights that are conducted using other flight planning applications. Uh, so I can add flights into here that are flown using, for example, uh, the drone manufacturer's flight planning application um, and specify all the details associated with those flights. Uh, including general information, details like its location and date, and any additional information including attachments or notes. So no matter where you're flying these, uh, these flights, no matter which application you're using to connect them, they can be managed and stored within the SiteScan fleet management tools. That's everything I have to show inside of SiteScan for ArcGIS. At this point, I'm going to pass it back over to Chris to just uh, sort of summarize things and introduce the next topic that we'll discuss. Thank you, Matt. Um, yeah, I appreciate the demonstrations. Obviously, you know, the enhancements that we've provided around fleet management, um, as well as the, the new capability with terrain follow. Um, you know, really provides a lot of a lot of insight into pilots, both in the planning environment as well as when they're uh, working with the data within SightScan Manager. So, um, I appreciate you running through those demonstrations. We covered on you know the ability to look at volumetrics and hull road analysis, um, visualization over time, you know, with that slider tool, as well as covered on some of the flight modes. So, what we want to do now is jump in and demonstrate, you know, what what you can do with that data when you take it one step further, bringing it into the ArcGIS system, um, doing further image analysis, or even pushing it into um, customized applications that you're working with, um, as well as getting it into the hands of a mobile user. Yeah, there you are. Thanks, Matt. So just to kind of give an overall view of Esri's approach to imagery and remote sensing, it truly is an ArcGIS system. It's a large ecosystem of um, you know, various components from image management, um, content, and then as we were showing within SiteScan, really that map production type uh, environment. So going from map production, producing those 2D and 3D data, data layers, as well as some an, um, visualization, and really pushing it even further to analysis, you know, leveraging deep learning tools, leveraging spectral indices, um, doing classification or further change detection on, on your data sets within the ArcGIS system, we've, we've provided now the ability to do that, couple the ArcGIS system with SiteScan for ArcGIS Online and really get more value and more power out of the data sets that you're creating. So with that, I'll pass it back to Matt and we'll show some of that integration into the ArcGIS system. All right, thanks, Chris. So I'm going to jump over to a new project uh, and show all of that integration with ArcGIS and, and how that works and, and what the different options are for you to perform analysis, perform visualization, and, and even take some of this data out into the field. Um, so here inside of the SiteScan Manager application, we have a mission that was flown that we were looking at 
earlier. Um, and what I can do to share this into ArcGIS is use these uh, tools down here at the bottom to directly share it into my ArcGIS online organization. Here, a prompt opens up for me to sign into my ArcGIS online uh, organization. And I'm able to specify what types of products I'd like to share. Uh, so I can share orthomosaics or DSMs, DTMs, or just choose to share everything. And when I do this and publish it, it'll take a, uh, a, a moment to, to register inside of my ArcGIS online organization. But then those information products will be ready to be shared with others through easy to use maps, uh, web scenes, applications, and, and like I said, mobile apps as well. To show what that looks like, I in, have jumped over to my ArcGIS Online organization now where I published, uh, I had published this textured mesh to. And I can see uh, this data and now inside of a 3D scene viewer application inside of ArcGIS. And this exposes a couple of tools for me to leverage, right? Things like um, the ability to measure heights. I can do that from this application. Or I could create uh, even elevation profiles using some recent enhancements to the scene viewer, which we've added. Uh, by just drawing a line along this textured mesh, we can actually use the mesh uh, to show us the profile um, of, of that surface here for inspection workflows or just for, again, just a general situational understanding of, of, uh, of this asset. Now, oftentimes though, your analytics might uh, be more involved and maybe you need to use some more complex tools like ArcGIS Pro, or you may want to just have that sort of raw data to upload it into ArcGIS Online for more advanced analytics. And to support that, we also let you download all of the information products that you create through the SiteScan Manager application. Uh, I can download the orthomosaics, the surface models and more. Um, and then I can upload them into ArcGIS Online. So let's say I've already downloaded those and I'd like to upload them to use them in some further analysis. And that's what I'm gonna show you how we do that now. Um, to do this, I'm using ArcGIS Image for ArcGIS Online, which is our software as a service offering for managing, uh, visualizing and analyzing all forms of remote sensing data, not just uh, necessarily drone, data, it could be satellite, aerial, uh, even uh, geophysical, scan maps, any type of data that you work with that's remote sense or uh, raster. And what I'm gonna use is use that application to upload our drone imagery. And to do that, all I have to do is go click uh, new item, create a new imagery layer, and then go find those files on my local computer and, um, and drag and drop those into this environment. So I'll specify that I want a tiled imagery layer, which um, uh, creates performant tiles, but also allows for you to use that as an input to raster analysis. I'll give it some information on, uh, again, the configuration of these layers that I want to publish. And then I'll just go drag and drop any of the layers that I'd like to use within um, my project here. Then I give it some title, tags, summary, and more. And the output products are then available to be used within any application inside of ArcGIS. Uh, in this case, I'm inside of the map viewer where we've allowed for users now to perform that raster analysis that I mentioned. Uh, if I go back, I, I, and I had said, one of the big reasons why you'd want to do this is if your analytical workflows maybe go beyond what you can do inside of the site scan manager application, you can then bring the data in here and truly build any type of raster analysis workflow you could imagine. And so I'll show you how we uh, build those workflows now. Here within the map viewer, I've got my ortho mosaic. I've also got digital surface model, and I can use any of those products to perform analysis using any of these out-of-the-box raster analysis tools. Uh, you've got tools in here for analyzing patterns, uh, looking at proximity, uh, doing things like monitoring vegetation, or looking at the terrain, uh, for example, calculating slope or watersheds. 
And we've even added our deep learning tools inside of this application. So you can train models to detect objects or to classify pixels and run those models in the cloud. So that way uh, they're running you know, not on a local machine, they can run uh, quicker and at scale for really large data sets. For this analysis, uh, I just wanna show you a simple one using a uh, slope, using our uh, calculate slope tool in this case. Uh, all I have to do is specify my digital surface model that I wanna use for that. Uh, and specify a couple more attributes and give it a name and click run analysis. Once I do that, my slope raster will get created, added to the map, which we can see here. And this could be used again for further downstream analysis, for example, looking for areas where the slope is higher than it should be, or areas where you know maybe the road design is inefficient or it's been degraded, and, um, and use that to better inform uh, how to manage your operations. Additionally, you have more customizable tools available to you within these raster analysis uh, capabilities. And in particular, you can build your own models of, uh, uh, or what we call raster functions, utilizing dozens and dozens of different tools. Uh, in this case, uh, I'll show you some of those tools that are available to you in here. Uh, all you have to do in order to use those in these model building type of experiences uh, is just drag and drop them onto this canvas over here on the right. In this case, I added the raster calculator tool and wrote an expression to calculate the difference between two surface models. So digital surface model two, uh, and then subtract digital surface model one. And using this uh, model building experience, you can wire up your inputs, uh, configure your raster function, and whenever you're done, you've built your own tool that can be run through the application here. So everything that we just saw within the model view is now shown through this panel on the left and users can update attributes if I wanted to, right? If they, if they wanted to rerun an analysis that somebody built, they could simply open up the model that was shared with them and change out some of these variables, maybe update the expression to do something different and run their analysis. And the outputs will again be simply uh, brought out into the map figure here. Uh, in this case, it's showing me the surface difference over time, um, where red is the most significant change in surface elevation. Now, this is, uh, as you saw, some of the capabilities you can uh, leverage when sharing data from SiteScan into the rest of the ArcGIS system. Uh, we looked at some simple visualization and exploratory uh, tools like measuring and um, more with the textured meshes. We also looked at some analytical capabilities with ArcGIS image, but it also includes, uh, as I had mentioned, and this is the last demo demonstration that we'll look at, uh, but it also includes mobile applications. So I switched back over to my tablet where I can search for a map that somebody else has published in my organization. And this map has a whole host of different layers available in it. It has stockpiles, it has laydown yards, ponds, roads, facilities. Uh, it also has uh, an upcoming blast plan that's been included in for this uh, operational area. And it also has contours that were derived from our drone imagery. And if I zoom in closer, that drone imagery will load out in the field. So I can see that really high resolution recent base map uh, and it, some of the analytics that were derived from it. So these stockpiles, as I click on them, show me the uh, total volume, the height, and the material in this case. So all this data is available to me in the field for visualization uh, and to help us you know, manage our operations again more efficiently. So that's everything that I have, and at this point, again, I'll uh, pass it back over to Chris to, to wrap up the webinar. Thank you very much, Matt, appreciate that. Um, just to summarize, you know, we, we provided a look into um, SiteScan for ArcGIS, both from SiteScan Flight as well as SiteScan Manager. So the ability to plan those 
autonomous flights, process the data within Site Scheme Manager, and then disseminate that data out into the ArcGIS system. So truly that end-to-end -end type solution for drone operations. Leveraging the cloud um, provides scalability necessary for dispersed workforces. We work with many customers that have global operations, and this just it provides the, the ability to share, um, get data into the hands of those users, and then also it, from a processing standpoint, right? Cloud-based solution um, is going to scale up and, and process data as needed. SiteScan Manager produces you know, the 2D and 3D products that we showcased throughout the presentation. Um, as well as some of the analytics capabilities that we that we showed, volumetrics, um, haul road analysis, change detection, looking at that temporal change over time from mission to mission. Um, we also talked on you know the enhanced fleet management capabilities, uh, both as far as what you know we're capturing from drones, um, collecting data via our flight planning application, but also those that are um, leveraging the manufacturer's flight planning application. We're able to pull data, allow you to log a, uh, a flight that, that took place and build that um, comprehensive look from a fleet management standpoint. And then finally, we showed the ability to either download raw data files, push data from uh, SiteScan for ArcGIS into the ArcGIS Online or ArcGIS Enterprise system, as well as display that data, bring it into applications that you're building for mobile access. So with that, I think we can open it up to um, some Q&A. And thank you again for joining us today for, for the webinar. Great. Well, thanks, everyone. Uh, I can get started here with questions. I'm, I'm Nico. I'm the product manager of um, SiteScan for ArcGIS. Um, so there's a couple questions we answered in the chat. Uh, we had one around the list of compatible drones. Um, so when it comes to the flight app, uh, I shared the list in the, the questions. There's a list of supported drones for the flight app. Um, Chris mentioned that in the next release of the flight app, we'll be adding support for the new FreeFly Astro uh, mapping drone, as well as the M300 RTK from DJI with the P1 sensor. So it'll be coming early in 2022. Um, also had a question around, um, again, around the, oh, sorry, actually on, on supported drones, when it comes to SiteScan Manager, uh, there you can process images from virtually any drone as long as the images are geo-referenced so you're not required to use the site scan flight app um, it does make the, the workflow uh, much more seamless because you can upload the data from the field it'll all be organized automatically and it'll log um, all your fleet management information automatically but you're welcome to use uh, third-party flight applications as well and, and process that in site scan manager we had a question asking, are, are these data products accurate enough to make measurements off of them? So accuracy is a, is a big question. Um, and we didn't show this today, but there's a lot of tools in SiteScan to, to both improve the accuracy. So through the use of ground control points and checkpoints to help you measure the accuracy. Uh, we also support the use of drones with uh, high precision uh, GPS, PPK or RTK. Uh, another similar question was asking if PPK or RTK, RTK georeferencing methods are mandatory. Um, they are they are not uh, mandatory at all. Uh, we you know we do recommend using ground control points if you uh, especially if you want to have um, the ability to do uh, repeated measurements over time. You want to compare um, a same site. Um, you, you'll want to have very accurate data, especially vertically. Uh, when you're doing these um, volumetric comparisons over time. But if you're just trying to do a, a one-time measurement, even with a, um, a prosumer grade drone um, that's pretty affordable with a um, uh, commercial uh, GPS, uh, you can still get high relative accuracy. So if you're just measuring an, an, an excuse me, individual stockpile at one point in time, um, you don't need to use uh, any high precision georeferencing or ground control. Uh, we had a question asking if it's possible to read with SiteScan LE limited edition version of flight plan made with the SiteScan flight app. Um, so no, we, we didn't really talk about, we didn't talk at all about SiteScan limited edition. So today there's two versions of the flight app. 
Uh, one is called Limited Edition, and that's available to all ArcGIS users. Um, it's primarily uh, for those users who are not using the SiteScan Manager. You can use the SiteScan Limited Edition. It's a disconnected version of the flight app. It doesn't have any of the, the flight plan sharing capabilities or the fleet management, but it still has the terrain following and all the different flight modes we saw today, the ability to bring in data from ArcGIS online. Um, and that can that is meant to be used with our desktop products like um, drone to map or uh, ortho mapping capabilities within ArcGIS Pro. Um, the full version of SiteScan Flight App uh, is the one that has all the, the sharing capabilities. I'll pass one over to um, to Matt. Um, there was a question. Sorry. If there's anything. Oh, is there a list of expressions that can be used for the model builder, Matt? I'll mute there. Um, yeah, there is a list of tools that can be used and, uh, and expressions that can be used within that raster function editor is what it's called. And, uh, and they're the same actually as the capabilities within ArcGIS Pro. So you find the same tools in both of them and you'll find the list of uh, expressions and tools inside of our documentation. And we could you know, absolutely include that in a, a follow-up to the webinar. Uh, but there's hundreds of them and very extensible in that you can write your own kind of formulas and things like that. Great. Thanks, Matt. Uh, we have two questions relating to multispectral support and asking whether um, uh, multispectral imagery can be processed in SiteScan and one around um, if, if um, the flight app can um, capture multispectral. So in the flight app, none of the drone configurations we support. Um, offer a multispectral sensor. However, in SiteScan Manager on the, the web app, uh, you can process multispectral imagery from um, the most commonly used sensors on drones up to five bands. This is a relatively new functionality. So currently you can process the imagery um, and, and you'd export the ortho mosaic uh, to either view it in ArcGIS Pro or to view it on ArcGIS Online or Enterprise. Um, at this time, you can't display it yet in SiteScan Manager. Um, as a side note, we just introduced uh, VARI visualization. So if you have uh, standard RGB images, you can use VARI, uh, Visible Atmospheric Resistance Index, to estimate vegetation health. Uh, and that's that comes in handy for uh, mine reclamation, for example. So if you want to see um, areas where, um, yeah, where your vegetation is healthy and, and returning to, um, to, to pre-mining conditions, uh, that's a a nice functionality if you're not equipped with multispectral sensors. Uh, and same goes for, for another question here about uh, using RGB and IR, thermal infrared. Uh, so SiteScan can process uh, RGB and thermal images together, and that can be displayed in SiteScan um, Manager. And there are some thermal sensors that are supported by the SiteScan flight app as well. Uh, we have a question around uh, terrain following on vertical flights. So yes, you can use terrain follow in uh, every flight mode. Um, the only exception is the inspection flight mode, which is a manual flight mode. Uh, so you can display terrain data, uh, but you're piloting the drone manually uh, in that flight mode, so it wouldn't follow the terrain uh, by itself. But in all other flight modes, um, terrain follow can be used. Um, I have a question that I'm going to um, translate. So is there a way to, to remove equipment from the, um, from the models to um, avoid, um, sorry, I'm translating this question. Uh, is there a way to, to remove objects and, and vehicles from the model to uh, avoid having false volume calculations? So yes, one of the outputs generated by SiteScan is um, we have both a digital surface model that will show everything and a digital terrain model that automatically uh, eliminates equipment. So that works really well. If you have uh, an excavator on a stockpile, it will, um, you know, it will do its best at 
uh, clearing it off and then your volume measurements would not take that into account. Um, if you want to further refine that automated process, uh, our ArcGIS Pro software has a lot of tools um, to help reclassify and customize the classification uh, of the either the point cloud or the train model and allow you to, to edit it for uh, even more accurate um, measurements. I see a lot of questions coming in. Thank you, everyone. Um, someone asked if there's a possibility to automatically count boulders and calculate the volumes present in a quarry using drone images. Do we have experience in that domain? So uh, yes, Esri has a lot of experience in, in automatically detecting things. So that's in our, our GOAI capabilities. Uh, and that can be done in ArcGIS Pro on desktop, or it can be done in the new ArcGIS image that Matt presented. So we have some pre-trained um, object detection models and uh, deep learning models that are um, available to our users. Uh, we don't have a model as far as I know today for boulders specifically, but we have all the tools that uh, would allow you to create your own deep learning model uh, to count in, you know, in the example asked for here, boulders. Uh, and then um, using uh, functions similar to, to what Matt showed earlier, uh, you could create a fully automated workflow um, that would also calculate their, their volume. So uh, it is possible and yeah, please reach out if, if you're interested in AI and I'm sure we'll have more, um, more webinars here and uh, a user conference. There will be a lot of um, uh, information about using artificial intelligence with, uh, with your drone imagery. Um, are there current underground mining applications? Um, so in, when it comes to site scan, uh, the answer is, is mostly no. Um, so site scan, both in the flight app and, and site scan manager requires geo-referenced images. Um, so when you're underground, you wouldn't have that geo-referencing. So site scan is really not intended for underground use. Um, but within the RJS system, uh, most definitely, uh, there's a lot of um, possibilities. I don't know if you want to talk more about that, Matt, but um, if you're using LiDAR um, indoors, we, we do have tools uh, that will allow you to, to leverage that data. You want to touch a little more on that, Matt? Yeah, I think you hit on it there with LiDAR. It, that is a very frequent topic with our customers in the mining industry is bringing in uh, subsurface, uh, like underground mining tunnels, uh, bringing in LiDAR scans that are geo-referenced uh, or helping to geo-reference ones that maybe aren't geo-referenced as well. And there's a, a whole host of different options, but yeah, our desktop software is definitely capable of bringing that in. Um, and then you can even share it out to the web as well. Uh, we have a question asking if we can export profiles, points as a CAD file or CSV. Uh, so I'll let Matt answer on the, the ArcGIS online side. Uh, there, there is one functionality though that Matt did not show, I believe, uh, within SiteScan directly, where when you're viewing the point cloud, uh, you can also generate a profile um, and that can be exported as its uh, own cross-section point cloud or as a CSV. Uh, but I'll let Matt speak to, to some of the uh, ArcGIS um, online and pro capabilities and integrations with CAD there. Yeah, you know, there are definitely ways to export to a CSV and, and to do a lot more profile analysis within Pro. Um, that's within ArcGIS Pro, there's quite a few tools to do that. Uh, and there's some as well inside of the web. Um, what we showed today, in the scene viewer with that profile, there wasn't, there isn't an option there to export. So I would lean towards uh, the site scan manager app, like you said, Nico, or to ArcGIS Pro. Yeah. I would say uh, too, yeah. Matt, what we didn't cover on, um, but is a capability, is the ability, if you are working in a CAD environment, to pull like a land XML um, file in and do that comparative analysis against your, your elevation data sets within site scan. Right, that's a, a good point, Chris. Uh, we didn't get to show you all of SiteScan and definitely not all of ArcGIS today, but the, uh, there is a cut fill analysis capability that allows you to compare surfaces directly within SiteScan Manager um, uh, on the web as well. Uh, so if you're working with CAD in that way. I was gonna say yeah. too, I think uh, you know, we did a 
a webinar on SiteScan probably a year and a half ago almost, and I think we showed that workflow in that demo, and it could be a yeah, resource we share after this so that everybody can see that demo, uh, the land XML comparison. So Great. Um, when loading boundaries from ArcGIS in the flight app, can I automatically plan a flight based off of that? Um, so um, not not today today but um uh, that will also be in the next version of the, the flight app so uh, matt showed how you can bring in data from arcgis online display it in the flight app as your you know, as a resource to, to help plan your flights uh, today you just retrace your your boundary around that um, but in the uh, the next version early next year uh, you'll be able to tap on any of those polygons and just just create a flight plan for you automatically um, I like these kinds of questions. Uh, can SiteScan only share data to ArcGIS online? We use ArcGIS Enterprise. Um, so in the, the demo, Matt showed he was publishing to ArcGIS online, uh, but if you are using ArcGIS Enterprise, uh, you can uh, link your, your enterprise portal to SiteScan uh, and publish to that as well. Um, earlier this year, about six months ago, we also added some tools that allow publishing to an enterprise portal, even if it's behind a firewall. Uh, so that runs a geoprocessing tool uh, behind your firewall that effectively pulls the data from SiteScan and brings it in for you. And that's something that you can automate uh, if you'd like. I think we covered a lot of the questions that came in. I think we may be missing a couple. Happy to help answer those um after over email um when, do we have any last takers for for q a uh, what did i miss yeah yeah I think oh it, actually well that's a good one for matt we can take that as a, a last one uh, when data is processed and added directly to your organization mm -hmm. your organization's yeah. arcgis online is it posted as a tile package that will be available for offline use you, when you publish from SiteScan Manager directly into ArcGIS Online through that, uh, that web interface that we looked at, that does get shared as a tile package, which is supported for offline use. That's right. And in the, the coming months, we'll also be adding some of the new um, the new formats that came with ArcGIS Image. Um, so you'll be able to publish uh, as the new tile imagery layer format, uh, which is different from the um, tile package. Uh, as well as a, a dynamic imagery layer. I think we covered most of the questions. If we missed anything, uh, of course, feel free to, to reach out to us. Um, and i uh, be happy to, to show you all of this in, in more detail. Taryn, I'll pass it back to you for closing words. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. I think that was a really helpful Q&A session. Wanna again, thank you for your time today. If you have any additional questions, you can feel free to reach us by email. Our emails are here for you. And as well, we have some great other resources that you can join um, at the bottom of our screen. And so we're gonna get you back to your day. And again, please reach out if you can ever have any assistance from us.